Welcome one, welcome all to the three ring circus that I like to call Lady with Leon. I'm your host, the Dustin Legend, Leon Rogers, 107.5 WGCI in Chicago, iHeartMedia Station. Hey, man, rocking the Negro League gear, get you some, the fighting Zulus instead of the fighting Alana. Negro League consciousness is cool. Want to give a big, big shout out to the family and uh, on the passing of DMX who uh, died last week, man. We're going to miss that brother. He was absolutely one of the most unique figures in hip hop there was nobody like him there was nobody as passionate as him and even for all the demons that he had he still had a strong faith in god and still put out banging hits nobody ever liked dmx never flossing chains never flossing jewelry he was truly a man of the people speaking of men of the people i got three dope ones on today these three brothers i got on the show are directly listen to what i'm telling y'all america directly responsible for me being in this seat right here and I, I want to bring them all on and thank them first up is my main man my brother who started me off in the game mr damon williams comedian actor radio person extraordinaire what's up damon what up leon <laughs> talk to you brother that chocolate idris elba brother in the middle with the headphones on and the pearly whites he's also uh, <laughs> a comic Radio personality and actor as well, Mr. George Wilborn, the stress reliever. Hello, sir. Ooh, what up there? What up, bro? How you doing? What up? <laughs> I lose my big brother. I'm not sitting in the chair at WGCI today if it's not for him putting the call in to Elroy Smith and telling him, go get that brother, my big brother, comedian, writer, actor, Tony Schofield in the building. What's up, T. Schofield? Hey, what's going on, my brothers, Kings. my brothers, my brothers, man? I ain't seen y'all in so long, man. This no, no like doubt. My, this been you like know? a high school reunion. I can smell Ben Gay and cool water through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know who got on the cool water. <laughs> One of the dopest parties of the year when you guys would get together and have y'all party to celebrate all because all y'all birthdays around the uh, same time. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that used to be a wonderful thing, man. But I want to go back to some. I, I opened up the show talking about DMX. And I know we all somewhat out there. So I'm gonna start with you first because I know me and you chop it up about hip hop all the time. Um, what did DMX music mean to you and what is his passing? How did his passing affect you? Man, it, it was one of those things that when I when I heard it, you know, it kind of shook me, kind of like when Kobe passed away. It was one of those things where you just got to take pause for a second because, I mean, we've hosted shows with DMX. I've had a chance to interview DMX, and um, he's just always been a different soul. I mean, I don't think that you could, you could say that DMX was like, you know, he was just him. No matter what situation he was in, where he was at, he was just him. He's always a great guy. And his music, I mean, it was, the, it was the voice of our generation. And a lot of people don't even realize, too, not only that, his music was great and powerful, but he was a heck of a little actor, too. And I know, he, he had chops. He had chops. He had chops. He had chops acting. But his music, man, was like the voice of the generation. It was that music where you get in the car, you on your way to the party, you just want to wild out, you want to get your spirits up and everything. So... Man, and not only that, he was he was introspective, you know. He 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 prayed during his music, so definitely impactful, definitely. George. Uh yeah, man. You know, you know, my experience, you know, and I've like Tony, you know, I've had a, a couple of occasions to, you know, to grace his presence on uh, uh some personal stuff in a personal setting. George having a little mic difficulty. Damon, go ahead. You can speak on it, uh, Damon. How did DMX passing affect you? Well, his passing was, you know, I mean, I'm, I was. Yeah. Say <laughs> so what now? Go ahead and finish your thought, George. Yeah. So you know, so it was, it was like it not, not surprising, but a loss. But I could, I could identify with a lot of the stuff that, uh, and a lot of like some of the demons and some of the tough things that the brother went through. I could, I can identify with that, and and the strength and some of the stuff and most of the stuff that he came overcame. You know. Now, what about my backdrop, cut? <laughs> no, your mic out on you. Uh, okay. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I just want to know what them shoes are above your head, man. I those are white knots. White. <laughs> Damon, please. Right. All right. Um, first of all, you know, it was quite shocking because, you know, he it was just a video posted up of him being very vibrant and, and kicking it, you know, and and all the interviews that have been coming up with him lately have been real introspective. So you thought that he had gotten to a point where he might have been past the demons. And his music, though, was so impactful in the sense that even though he might be saying the grimiest lyrics, you could still vibe to it at a party like he had club bangers talking about robbing, killing, you know, har, har, you know, and, and you know, was. he was such a dichotomy of, of, of forces, man, between the prayer and the hip hop and the beats, you know, like you say, a true original. Yeah, I, I, and I, and I feel you on how his music touched everybody. Here it is, my mom somewhere uh, 70 something years old and her favorite song is y'all gonna make me lose my mind. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> do you realize yeah, you know that song? She was like, that was DMX, I like, I like that song. So. I think he impacted and touched everybody. I wouldn't necessarily call him one of my top five MCs. I just think from a passion level, he was a street poet. Like he put me in the same realm with Tupac and Chuck. Right. They just made you want to go out and do something. Like DMS could tell me to go burn down a building. I'd do it because right. the ex is talking. So right. you know, that's and, and you know what, Leon, uh, just like what you said, it, it's music touched everybody. I'm riding through California uh, Saturday. And I swear, all you heard in the streets, DMX. I pull up the old white ladies in the car. They bumping DMX. I'm telling you, it was serious. <laughs> yeah. hey, oh, so I'm going to continue. continue off that flex, Damon, and I'm going to talk to you since me and you are the only two that are still in Chicago. I guess I'll let the other two guys to tell me, you know, what one. Damon, tell me what was it like growing up in Chicago and uh, you, you, you're still here. I'm still here. I'll get to the other two guys who grew up in Chicago, but because they're rich and famous now, they've left. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it like growing up in Chicago, man? It, it's been a, Chicago informed me, man. It made me. And like, so we started out in Woodlawn, you know. I went to third grade, so I felt the Woodlawn community. I was, you know, and being of age, I remember when the Blackstone Rangers were a community organization, and you know, said, <laughs> yeah, it's a bunch of moles on here." Um, <laughs> I was well, seventy first. No, but I remember Woodlawn, that baby. Woodlawn community organization, and then my mom's moved us south to Beverly, and uh, you know, I saw it was weird because when we first moved, it was white people, right? And, and, and it was so crazy. Let me tell you how weird it was, man. It was this white, these white girls, Gina and Lisa, I'll never forget it. On their birthday, I look out the window, they walking a pony down the block. I'm like, we ain't in real life. <laughs> <laughs> well, you went True out there story. like genuine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the longer we Gucci lived, D. It, it got blacker, you know? And, 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 but but it, was, it was great community, like all the households had fathers. I re that's one thing I remember about our neighborhood. You know, you grew up in the same neighborhood. So it was the Dunbars, the Ellisons, the McDowells. Oh, you know, thank so you. That's, that's what I love about Chicago. Yeah, I, I, hey, hey, they, it was everybody's father but ours. I <laughs> this service to my audience. I could not tell you to elaborate on the fact that two white girls was walking a pony, a pony. in the neighborhood. Please yeah. on that. Did you ever like ask them why do they have a pony in the middle of the? And did they ever get out of the neighborhood? Two things. Um, it was a birthday party, and their family had three houses on the block, so they were walking the pony from one cousin's house to the other one. Oh, and, okay. And then once they got the pony to the next house, no, George, I never saw them again. They moved. <laughs> And I'm pretty it sure. might have been a it might have been a pack mule. They might have been moving that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done that. I've walked my pony to my cousin's house before. That it, it, it ain't no big thing in that. See, sometimes you got to walk a pony down the street, man. I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna go with B. When the new black people moved in, they had to move because the pony was the center of a barbecue <laughs> <laughs> and a hair salon. Ribs fire. Girl in this 18 inches ain't bad either. 
had we had we had a Hispanic that uh walked a great dane and I knew before that counts. Wow. <laughs> well I might hear in California where you may see anything walking down the street. I saw a turkey my height. I'm six two. I saw a turkey that was Six foot even. I ain't lying. People look at me like, what's up? Like, what's up? I heard you ate some of my cousins. Like, <laughs> anything to run up on you out here, man. I ain't lying. Yeah. I, I, I'm in the wilderness, people. Okay. <laughs> Coyotes, deers, mountain lions just running around out this joint. So, George, you, yes. start, you started out in Chicago and your career is taking you all across the country. What all over the world. Like, what was it like, man? Uh, and, and I'm talking about you've moved to different cities, like and lived there, not just going doing yes. shows. What was that like for you, Ben? And how does how does your Chicago mentality translate when you go to other cities? Well, first of all, you guys understand something that you know. Even like they say, New York. If you can make it there, you make it anywhere. And and I've lived in New York, and and it is a different kind of grind. As all of you guys know, you know, over the years of mm-hmm. of staying there and working there. But Chicago, if you you know that's that they should have made the song you know about Chicago because that's really more indicative of what Chicago breathes, especially from us. You know, if you make it in Chicago, you make it anywhere. So I've always been comfortable when I moved to LA both times, or, or when I moved to New York, when you know when I moved to DC, when I moved to Atlanta, you know, which where I'm here now. You know, when I went back to Brooklyn, you know, when I, it doesn't matter because you were cut from Chicago. That's what you guys don't understand. You know, well you do understand it and, and 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 i love that you do is that it it wasn't something that we specifically did it just where we came from and how we raised each other and that's why you're some of the top radio personalities and the top com- uh, comedians and everywhere you guys go you know your name and your city precedes you and that's just you know that's just how it is and that's not being cocky that's yeah. just you know that's just what it is you can go to any comedian in any city you know, I'm working on a show right now that people love and, you know, that people scrambling, you know, fighting over because it's 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 basically, you know, showing that Chicago is can stand up against and um, above any city. And it takes all of those cities to try to collectively even get to where we are. And I think that's because of what, you know, our city is and how we overcame it, you know, and how we made it funny. No, no doubt, man. Chicago's doing it. Being in LA right now, you know, you got my man D Ray, you got Lil Rel, you got a uh, Corey Holcomb, you got uh, a D Ray Davis, you got you got you know, Dion Cole, you got the, the you got Craig Robinson, you, you got uh, yeah. Cheryl Underwood, you got uh, you got uh, Hannibal Burris, you got Wanda Sykes, you got I mean, everybody know Chicago, no, she from DC, Wanda from DC. George, if you want to stay on this show, you're going to have to stop smoking weed. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was nice. It was good seeing you guys again. I wish you all I wish you all the best. Hey, hey Tim, <laughs> you know what? Listen, I always thought you should have got the rolling powder. I was... <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I thought I should have got the roll, too. Hey, and when we come back from break, man, more with my brothers, man. As you can see, this is going to be a wild show tonight. Tony, I'm going to talk to you and your experiences about growing up Chicago. We'll be right back. More later with Leon. Let's play some bill. Unstable. We are back. Later with Leon. I'm your host, the guest legend, Leon Rogers. With me today, I got my three brothers, man, who helped me uh, put my foot in this game. Uh, my man, George Wilborn, Damon Williams, and my big brother, Tony Schofield. Tony, before we left, we talked to Damon and George about growing up in Chicago and how it's translated in their careers and how it's allowed them to move around, uh, especially George, who's been a lot of places, Damon, who's traveled all over. Uh, you, brother, unique story as well. You're from Chicago, but you've made your way out to the West Coast while you're living, but it, on the radio side. So talk about growing up in Chicago, or the suburbs of Chicago, and how that's branded and molded you as a comedian. Uh, man, you know, Chicago just makes you tough, period. So uh, you got to have a thick skin in Chicago because, you know, we was playing the dozens when we was five years old on the playground. You know, I, <laughs> and but I was always a little light-skinned kid. I got sent home. I got sent packing many days. Many a day I got sent packing. And you guys also know my interesting story that I went to 13 schools by the time 12th grade came. 
So I was literally in another school every nine months or so. So I always had to, you know. You was prepping, you was prepping for penitentiary runs. Right? <laughs> yeah, man, I was Six months here, seven months there, nine months here. <laughs> so I was always the guy that yeah. Now, what was you saying, Lee? No, I'm just saying like at 13, like please expound on that to our listening audience, our viewers. 13 schools and to, uh, up to the 12th grade. Were you a bad kid? And I, and I only went to one high school, just moving around a lot. I was in like gifted programs and stuff like that. So that prepared me also, because you know, I was always a writer as a kid. So right. that prepared me to do comedy in Chicago. But when I came up, man, in Chicago, just like what uh, Damon said, I knew everybody's last name on this side of the block and that side of the block. You know what I mean? And uh, it was just about neighborhood, family. Uh, yeah, there, there was some things going on that were, you know, nefarious and all of that. I mean, we all grew up with that. But I think back in the day, the OGs kind of kept, uh, when they saw youngins like us and saw uh, youngins like us with a little talent, they kind of kept their foot on our neck. Like, you know, they, they could tell when somebody was for the streets or when somebody was for doing something else. And we had that we had that back in the day where the OGs be like, man, get off this corner, go and, you know, play ball. You know, I heard you a writer. I heard you can draw. I heard you can do this. Go and do yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? So that was the experience I had. And that's kind of what got me here. And what keeps me like me and Leon, man, we used to go to schools like every week, man, to talk to the uh, to the young people. So that's what keeps me inspired and giving back to them as well. Well, you had been to all of those schools, so you owe it to those schools to go back to them. <laughs> hey, hey Tom, I had the OGs telling me to get off the block, but they said, before you go, can I get that beeper? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Speaking of that, speaking about odd jobs, you had a lot of them before you got into comedy. What were some of the crazy professions you had before you decided to pick up the microphone? Well, me, Tom, well I worked I, at City Hall for five years. Um, but well, while I was at, well, I, I got it. I got you. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. You're not going to just gloss over that. Damon Williams, Mr. Did, 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 was a ooh, ooh. What, for what mayor? Or you was uh, playing? I was actually there. I was there uh, when Harold Washington was mayor. Wow. Wow. And it was, wow. it was quite an honor to be in City Hall because he had pulled the limo back out. He had just won. I guess he won in like 83 or he started his 83, 84. It was and, nice, um, an ugly season. I remember that clearly. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember working the, the campaign and, you know, get him elected, help him get elected. And then to see him come in the hall with his security detail and the limo and all that. But meanwhile, I was moving packs uh, <laughs> on the low. Oh, hey, well, the views and opinions of Mr. Damon Williams and other affiliates on this show do not represent the views and opinions of Later with Leon. I'm just saying that's if the feds still but, got but, you. but let me tell you, it was a Are social they? thing, Leon. It was a social thing at that time before it got crazy. So, you know, a yeah. little this, a little that. But I took that experience at City Hall, <laughs> but I always decided or, or, or felt like I wanted to be my own boss. So I went into um, and found a franchise for Subway which I found that franchise by reading an article in Black Enterprise Magazine. It was one of the top franchises for Blacks under 40, blah, blah, blah. Got into Subway for like, I had my Subway for two years. But during I had my Subway, I met these guys who told me about an open mic down at uh, this comedy club. And it was this chick with big lips from HBO. They were saying, you know, the girl with the big lips on HBO, she's the host. And that's how I heard about All Jokes Aside. Now, mind you, I had Subway before Jared was was the spokesperson. He was still just a fat freaky pedophile. We just didn't know. And, and that's good. And mind you, and mind you, cuz it sold so much dope from this damn uh from this sandwich shop that he really did he, he needed to find a way to get some cover, you know. Putting <laughs> on these sandwiches. I got a cup. They that. was losing weight. They was losing weight like yeah, man, like, they like, like like how do you buy that? <laughs> How do you buy a sandwich and then don't have the appetite to eat it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I do not approve any of those methods. <laughs> Subway was my retirement and my uh, a Subway sandwich will cost you hundred and twenty five dollars. <laughs> Oh, 
It's It's fine. It's hilarious. But that's not true. Actually, and that's what the (laughs) subway, uh, like the franchise general manager, they thought that's what we was doing down there, but we were not. Uh, If we were, I'd still be open. Um, But that led me to, to, uh, to try to find an open mic. Now, here's a quick story. The night I went to All Jokes was on a Wednesday. The Tuesday prior to that, I went to the first, the original Close Up Piano Bar, all right? Mm. And they was doing comedy there. And I happened to go up and did a little five minute set. I had never done stand up before. I come off stage, this guy right here, George, went up, killed it. When he came off stage, I approached him. I said, look, uh, I wasn't raised by my dad, but my dad is William Wilborn. Uh, he told me I got a cousin that does stand up. I'm your cousin. I said, I'm just not trying this stuff. And once I figured it out, I'm gonna come back and holler at you. And I tried to bounce. George's like, where you going? You can't just walk up and tell me you my cousin and just leave. And so he's the one who got me on that Wednesday night the next night. He took me to all jokes because you had to get through James Hanna. And James Hanna <laughs> held the gun. I would have never got on stage. One of the greatest writers ever to do it, man. Yes, sir. Time. I got to mention time. that, brother. So George yep. got me on, man, and I never stopped. I kept going every week. Uh, you know, I, I started going. Tony Schofield was the host at, uh, the, what was that? The, the, uh, the, comedy, the Comedy Act Theater. The comedy Chicago branch of Comedy Act Theater. So yeah. I, would try, I would try to bribe him to get on stage. It was, you know, I was determined to do it, man. So that was, those are my occupations. I've been doing comedy ever since then, except for radio with Tom Joyner. That used to be so Banks. fun. Meanwhile, like, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm hey, on my way. why you didn't mention that Jerry Carroll that you had and that members only that you had that first night you did comedy? So he came up to me. He had a Jerry Carroll, right? Uh, and and a, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. He had a Jerry Carroll. It was a wig. It was a Jerry Carroll and a members only jacket. He had a nice suit on up under. He said, "Hey, I'm your cousin." I said, "Nick, well, you ain't my cousin. You must be on my daddy's side. You ain't, you ain't on my cousin." And then, and then he went on, I saw, and then he took his wig off, and he had a nice suit on, a tie, and then he went and rocked it. I said, ah, right, you might be my cousin, but you're still on my daddy's side. Yeah. <laughs> Before we go any further, I got one last thing I want to ask David, but I want to go to Tony and George first with this, and all I want is a one-word answer. On a scale of one to ten, both y'all listen, on a scale of one to ten, Rate Gucci D bite the dust. Tony. <laughs> you you you're dirty. You dirty. I can't say the word. I can't say the word, Leon. You 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 low, man. Go ahead, Tony. Go ahead, Sco. <laughs> I'm so and you can't use I'm that. I'm gonna take a page out the chapter book. You can't a scale of one to ten. Oh, scale of one to ten, you can't use seven because that's a safe number. Now I was gonna say. I give him a six. A six? Yeah. George. I don't even know either one of y'all heard it, but I know George heard all my raps back. Then. Let me tell you something. Without you any doubt. Me, yeah? Without without any doubt. If he had a little bit better equipment, it'd have been a ten. A solid eight. And that's and, solid. And that thing, that's what it was. It was the, solid eight. It was the it was the sound. It was the mastering or whatever. That's, that's it, that that was that was it. And almost Gucci. <laughs> Solid eight. Come on. Up, my, my, my joint was the syndrome. Forget that. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny, man? I, I haven't, I, I lost the master to syndrome because that's the it one song the streets was actually. Oh, good. no. Oh, wait, oh, I just now, got a cassette. Joint. I just got a cassette of my original demo. I just I just got to get it transferred up, man. So the syndrome shall return. Dude, and, you got yeah, And Gucci yeah, D will buddy. be back. Hold on. Yeah. Now that was my joint right there. Yeah. Syndrome, can baby. We, can we get that digitally to Apple Music and title so people can go stream that dog? Because I feel like bike and dress is so hard. Because I, I'm looking at the haircut, it's like almost gone, but right there you're saving it. You got the <laughs> jacket on. Hey, now you understand why I've been bald every since. <laughs> you look so hard. You look like you, you, look like you just slapped somebody, grandmama, on Easter Sunday. On the- <laughs> oh, my hey, my, my younger brother, Leron, said, he, you know, he's taller than me. He's 6'3". Dr. Dr. Ron, sir. Yes, Dr. Leron Washington. Yes. Dr. Leron Washington, please correct that, sir. 
So we were okay. coming down a flight of steps, and I still had the box cut. And you know, he the he the most he the most candid person in my life. If you want to hear the raw, we gonna put the rod around. The man yeah, said, "Hey, bro, I think it's time because your high top is fading fast." <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? What you know what? Y'all used to get mad at me. I remember all y'all keep getting mad at me because I'm kind of I may be considered the oldest, but yet still somehow or another these uh, thick locks are still around. I I have not. I, me and it's the jeans though, because if you if you don't do that, they, uh, Leon. My daddy went through four chemo treatments and then lose his hair, so I know. I'm <laughs> man, the only the only the only person got better hair than me is is my uncle William Will. <laughs> <laughs> and when I say this, America, y'all don't know. I wish we had a picture that we could throw up. But all knees must bend and all heads must bow to what George Wilborn said there. Because that brother came in the Man, sugar, honey, iced tea if he ain't got the <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, though. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We are forgetting about Damon's pop slots. About his this That's what we're talking about. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Dude, Damn. are you kidding me? Absolutely. I know that's what y'all was talking about. I'm like, he's got the what? Daddy, hey. 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 23 years old and got butters better than anybody out here on the planet. The only one that looked better than William Wilborn's uh, butter is Moses. And you got to go look at Moses, the, the Ten Commandments, when he come down from the mountain the last time. <laughs> hey, and, before, and when we come back from the break, Tony, we going to talk about a, a story about... Why is, I wish I still had my hair because of what happened in that room. We'll talk about that. I know we got to go to the room. I wish I got some stucco and a bald head. Do not mix, all right? <laughs> come back. We're going to go back to a time when Tony Schofield actually had hair. I remember that. <laughs> I got to go find a picture, right? And it's shot town to the day I die, man, on the show tonight, man. I got George Wilborn, Damon Williams, Tony Schofield, three Chicago legends, guys that gave me my, or uh, opened the door for me and helped me in this business. I'm forever grateful. We're having a good time, man. But we talked about uh, Damon Williams' alleged uh, ineptitude uh, subway game, moving them packs. <laughs> <laughs> and we also talked about his struggles with hair. Well, I'm looking at two ball brothers on the show, so I got to go to Big Ben Tony Schofield. Now, at one time, though, I mean, you had locks like the dudes that used to dance on the end of Dev Comedy Jam. No right? doubt. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ah, <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, hey. Uh, hey. I feel like the dude come out at the end, like. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> yes. So what uh, happened, Tony? You said what happened? Just what happened, bro? What happened to the dread? <laughs> uh, that was this little thing that came and uh, paid me a visit called alopecia. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know if y'all know about that, but it makes your hair falls out in plugs. I was literally waking up with like dreads on my pillow, just like, oh, okay, yeah, this ain't gonna happen. So I, I did I did the whole do I, I think that is struggle, but I I, I, yeah. I think that is so I think that is so wrong to play the alopecia card. I just really do. Even though you had it, I just think I just think as a comedian you shouldn't say <laughs> you shouldn't use that. <laughs> Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hate old dudes with hair. <laughs> I really hate old dudes with hair. Hey, I just wonder, does does the same thing happen everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you really looking like NBA young boy. That's right. <laughs> Get there, that's good for me. I don't care if the curtains match the drapes. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Let's talk about this comedy game that we're all in. Where did you find your love for comedy, George, and the stage? Where did, where did you find your love for this game? Uh, on the on sixty six and Ingleside, on eighty fifth and Aberdeen, in the Woodline community, in Gresham and community, and uh, in Inglewood, on the CBS High School, Gresham Elementary School. Trying to uh, forget about how much we didn't have is where the core of of where my comedy came from i we didn't i'm laughing at the i'm laughing at the people in the chat room on youtube they say all they see is a shirt talk. <laughs> <laughs> and now he froze and now he froze he didn't hey, have George, that particular time need the mouse some more cheese come <laughs> on <And> david <laughs> Wait, until we get George back, David, I want to ask you that question. <laughs> what in the whole hell? So I'm gone again? <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. All I see is a shirt. Okay. You, right. you, all, you all didn't hear any of that wonderful story? This is so oh. horrible. <laughs> I feel so much like Teddy Riley right now. This is not... They said they can't pay attention to what you said because all they see is the shirt. Oh, <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on. They say you look like the logo to go into the men's bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on. Let me fix my light. Hold on. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> that's ridiculous. I, I feel that's you take it back. <laughs> I resemble that mark. You guys can see me. You Negroes can see me. Now, all this stuff was a shirt telling you. <laughs> That is so crazy. I am not that dark. <laughs> Damon, where'd you find your love for comedy, man? Where, where did it start for you? Well, to be honest, man, you know, growing up as a kid, I used to watch The Tonight Show. I always loved comedians. I mean, we talking, if it, it could have been Bob Hope. It could have been Rodney Dangerfield. But when I saw Delirious, Eddie Murphy, that was the first time I ever saw my cousin was a baller. He had a VCR. The one when the remote was still connected to the cord. The cord, yeah. Yeah. So he had a VCR, and the first tape I ever saw on a VCR was the Delirious video, and I laughed so hard that I was like, man, this guy is the greatest. Then I saw Eddie live twice, so that made me love it. But then once I did the um, the open mic at All Jokes, I, I was hooked. And, and while y'all talking about my daddy's hair, can y'all see him? Let me see if I can put that up there. Uh, nope, can't do it. All right. <laughs> oh, there he is. Y'all see him in the middle. Anyway, forget it. But yeah, man, so that's where I developed my love. So when I was at City Hall, uh, still working, people were actually um, starting to call me Eddie because I kind of emulated Eddie Murphy as far as humor was concerned. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, that cuz. You know I love you. Hold on. I ain't, this is the first time I heard this. They, they say, what now? What? My kidding. nickname at City Hall was Eddie. <laughs> you, now, that, now that my light is back on. Now that my light is back on. Let me George, <laughs> my amusement. I swear to God, George, this is just for my amusement. Cut your lights off and say and say what you just said to Damon. Say what you say, cuz. Please cut your lights off and do it. Cut the lights <laughs> <laughs> What you say, cuz? <laughs> <laughs> what you say? Y'all can see me. Y'all better stop playing. <laughs> we gotta get those clear. That's we gotta get those clear. You need to keep the lights off them shoes. That's what you <laughs> dark in that closet. Wow. How did, how, did, how did you get your love for comedy? Where does it stem from, man? How did you uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you talking to me or George? I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to the shadow anymore. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to you. 
You talk about you, you, you talk. You, you went from you went you went the polar opposite. I don't know why you talking about me. <laughs> Hey, can you turn your light off so we can see? <laughs> I am the light, sir. I am the light. Right. <laughs> I can't see him either. <laughs> so, so uh, man, you know, I came up like any other comic in Chicago with the bad kid in school. Like I said, the, the jokester. I started off in comedy just doing the little rooms. Um, you know, the, the, and when I came up, I'm, I'm I'm gonna be honest, man. We had some hell of a writers, man. Like I said, we were talking about earlier, James Tanner. We had our Lee Leroy. These guys went on to write for TV and all of that. Yeah. And just going, growing up in the game, the one thing about a Chicago comic, man, you you had to have some you had to have some skills. You couldn't just like they weren't gonna put you on every stage. They weren't gonna let you go to every show. No. And you had you had to kind of prove yourself at first. So, um. Just growing up in the shy, man, I got all my comedy from just observing life. Uh, just, I had a brother that was a ninja. So, I mean, you know, I had all kind of, I had all. Hey, hold up, wait. Man? What? Oh, first of all, I want to do this right now. George, <laughs> George ain't done it yet, but Damon and Tony, y'all cannot throw sugar, honey, iced tea stuff out there like, my brother was a ninja and keep talking like <laughs> Yeah, man. Cause I know Tony family. He lived close by me. I know I'm, which one was a ninja. <laughs> My little brother. And was he a real ninja or was he a a nig ninja? Let me tell y'all something. Okay, at first you might think he was a nig ninja, just like a, a, a dude from the crib trying to be a ninja. But this dude took it to the next level. I'm talking about the dude's room was a temple. The dude, <laughs> used to make, the dude used to make poison. He shot me in the neck with a blowout one night. I'm coming in the house. I, he in the tree. He in the tree in front of our house. I'm coming in the house. All I hear is... <laughs> 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 he used to ride his bicycle up north and confuse white women. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. I believe. Uh, oh my God! And I had a cousin. I had a cousin who was a Teletubby. <laughs> why, why, why are you telling my business, George? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, me now be role playing. Hold on, George. When we come back, I need to know who that cousin was and why the Teletubbies out of everybody. We'll okay. Like More later with Leon coming up. Welcome back to Later with Leon. I'm your host, the Destin Legend, Leon Rogers. Man, make sure you go on YouTube, follow Fox Soul, check out the streaming, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you like what you're seeing. We appreciate you here at Fox Soul doing wonderful things going into 2021 and beyond. I got my man George Wilborn, Damon Williams, Tony Schofield with me right here on Later with Leon. George, before. Yes. You said you had, uh, you had somebody that uh, uh, was emulating the Teletubby. Who was that? Tinky person? Winky. What is that story about? <laughs> Tinky Winky. I had a cousin who Im imitated Tinky Winky. It was a Damon. But it's a long story. <laughs> we don't have time for it. But Tinky Winky, I, I love you, man. Be yourself. All right. <laughs> okay, <Tinky Winky. laughs> All jokes aside, man, legendary comedy club, Ray Lambert, Mary Lindsay. James uh, Alexander. James Alexander. I got my Thank start you. here. George, you were a host in the heyday when the heavy hitters was coming through, like DL, Steve Harvey, Monique, Adele Givens, uh, Bernie Mac, rest in peace. You were the host there. You were the namesake. You were the staple of that building. What was that like hosting one of the Super Bowls of black comedy because in, in the country, all jokes aside was that spot. Yeah. It was it was nuts. I mean you guys know that it was um it was the ring me being blessed to be the ringmaster at one of the most incredible circuses that you will ever see. George wow. when it, George 
Damon, you also would host that on Wednesday nights. Yeah, let me just uh, piggyback that since his audio went out. George was really the reason okay. people came to the club. Like yes. you, the headliners would be one thing, but you never knew what George was going to say. You never knew, uh, you know, what he would do, man. And I just sat and I watched him. That's how he was my mentor. You know, I, I just met him and found out he was my cousin. Then we eventually, he moved into my house. We, we had a house. And so I watched that brother, you know, just, and, and it was the, it was the place where, it was who's who when the Bears, the 85 Bears were still popping. They came when the Bulls came, you know, and Jordan was Mike winning. Jordan, they yeah. all of them. Everybody would be there, man. And, and we dressed everybody. You dressed up yeah. for all this. There's I a did. documentary, uh, Funny Business, spelled with PH, a black comedy. Everybody needs to see that because no from doubt. George Wallace on down to uh, let's give our man uh, Rodney Winfield, who was the first person that I, the first celebrity that I met from all jokes. And, and once he found out I was the dude, he was, <laughs> was, he was no longer now look hey look hey look he was my mentor right he, he was my best friend till he met damon he was, and damon then he told me right he said john let me tell you something <laughs> you are no longer my best friend <laughs> damon is my new best friend that's my cousin now chop 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 <laughs> hey, and he was chopping it up with a subway car <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, you were the first person to bring me up on All Jokes Aside stage on Wednesday night while I bombed horribly. And my father said, I can't believe I came all the way down here for this sugar honey iced tea. But Damon was there, and you all told me to keep going, and I kept going. What was yeah. it like for you hosting that environment, especially on open mic night? Because you got to see a lot of the new faces. Yeah, no, you, and, and the thing about you guys were, uh, was that I was just, it was good to just see a club that put new comedians up every week where, where they wouldn't have had a chance to go. And come on, it's like all jokes aside, you got young comedians just starting off in a room full of people. I remember just getting out that car in the parking lot and walking to see the line of people out there at all Man. jokes aside. It was incredible. So. Yeah. And that's one thing that uh, James, Mary, and Raymond always did, man. They they made sure that they kept young comics on stage. They supported the future of And they comedy. paid them. And they paid them. They, they, we was one of Let the first people that something. paid comedians. They paid them. And they Let checks didn't you. bounce. And you came yes. in and the audience listened to what you yes. had to say. And you could put some clothes on, man. And it honed the best comedians in entire world in my opinion but nobody in this country can touch you guys because of the training ground that we had you know in all joke society yes you had the bernie max you had you know people you know that was like you're not just going to be mediocre you gotta you gotta be funny i mean you had a trained audience that was used to seeing some of the funniest cats in the world that's why these cats it's no diss to new york and the, and, and to atlanta and and you know all these different cities with great comedians dc but they know they can't mess with Chicago. They yeah. know that. Yo, yeah. and all jokes, just one more thing about all jokes aside, like we were saying, um, you know, we had a lot of promoters back in the day. You didn't get your money sometimes. Sometimes your money was short. But that week that you worked at uh, all jokes aside, you like, we're going to count. Your it money was good. That check, that's one check ain't going to bounce. It ain't going to be short. So and, <laughs> and, and, a, and a third of it was going to Damon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me let me add to that, man, because the, the, all jokes was so uh, important that uh, Sinbad and his brother Mark Atkins and, and Andre Wiseman brought Comedy Central to Chicago. They built the right. backdrop and, and did a show called Comic Justice hosted Comic by AJ Jeff. Jamal, yeah. which was That's my right. first television experience. And comic, for Comedy Central to come and, and give us, let us do skits. And, and film stand-ups, black comedians in Absolutely. Chicago, outside of Hollywood, all jokes can't be touched. I don't care what nobody else does, who does what with, with comedy. It was a professionally dope spot. Yes, no you know what? I'm still trying to find those skits. I've been looking everywhere for them skits. Damon's got them, and I've got them. I got a bunch of tapes. I got a bunch of the masses. I got okay, a bunch of the skits so. and stuff. I still got them. Yeah, okay. I will say this, speaking as a comic that came in on the tail end of you guys' era, People don't understand how tough all jokes aside was. You had to audition for open mic on Wednesday. I'll put it yeah. like that. 
I literally had to come and show Mary and them that I could do open mic on Wednesday before she would give me a shot. And I'm so thankful that I was tempered in t- that type of fire because sure. once I got on, once I got on, it was a beautiful thing. Some comments from the uh, chat room from the viewers. Shout out to RJ Renee is watching. She says, this is the best lady with Leon ever. I'm loving what's going on. And then uh, a, a young lady that all you guys know, and you've had the pleasure to meet, my mom, Miss Alfreda Rogers, she told uh, me, so she says, George, Damon, and Tony, my guys, it doesn't get any better than this. So uh, she's she's watching, man. So hey, absolutely. Mama. Hey, mom, how you doing? We're going to be showing some love her. Of, of all jokes aside. That was a very powerful, powerful building, man. I can remember watching uh, watching you guys hit the stage. And George, let me tell you something. I say this all the time. One of the greatest things I've ever seen, you had a joke about women cultivating penises. It was a field of them, and they just everywhere. <laughs> and I, was, I was like, this is the greatest joke ever. He's literally talking about growing dingaling. And- <laughs> Like no. girl talks, and I, I, yeah. and I just remember, like I remember everybody says, I remember Tony Schofield calling me Calvin from McDonald's. My oh yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that was the first time I bought you up. Yeah. <laughs> first time I, you up. <laughs> I still had that VHS, 1996. I watch it. Wow. I'm inspired. Yes, I still have a VCR. People out there that might be watching, and I. <laughs> I watched these tapes, man, and it was just a beautiful time. And I was glad I got to experience that. I tell new comics, if you didn't get to experience all jokes and style, you got to experience jokes and notes, which was great, too. Don't get it yeah. twisted. Right. It was great. Wow, but, that was a different monster, man. That was a it was. Monster. Yeah, it was a different breeding grounds. And, and, and look at us now. You know, here it is. We're on, on later with Leon. You know, some years later, you guys are doing comedy. You're doing, we're doing films. You know, we friends with Spike Lee. Spike called me for that film that I did in Chirac. I don't give a shit that no one saw it. You know, I mean, I just scared <laughs> that, that he he knew me and, 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 and put us in. You got your own stuff there. You know, Tony Schofield, look at what you're doing, you know. Damon, you know, you work with Tom Joyner, you know, you know, we 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 hold each other down in a very serious way and we held each other accountable to to be the best comedians and the best entertainers that we can be. And Chicago is going to always be like that, you know, and and it's, if you're going to be funny, you know, you better you, you better make sure that you you do the right thing, you know, period. Do the, do the work. What better what better note to take us out the break to, man, when we come back from the break. I have my closing thoughts, some things, some quick things, some points we're going to hit around when we come back. More later with Leon, man. This is a great show. I wish, I wish we could talk for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One of my most enjoyable shows ever. I got my on with me. My man Damon Williams, my man George Wilborn, and Tony Schofield. Before, I, I, before we wrap this up, George Wilborn gave me, I, I get something from all these uh, comedians, from Damon, I get I get stage presence, have a sense of style from Tony. I get my writing, my creativity. From George Wilborn, I get my you have to treat people that are beneath you like they're beneath you. This <laughs> <laughs> comic who I will not name walks up and jumps in our conversation. George stops, looks at the comedian and says, he said, hold on, Leon. He said, Hey man, how long you been doing comedy? The comic said about five years. He said, Well, between these two guys. There's over 35 years of comedy. He said, you bring nothing to this conversation. And then turn back to me and talk like dude wasn't standing there. And I said, George, listen, you are not going to make me to be some mean, tyrant, old comedian. <laughs> the, the young man was very disrespectful to you. He had jumped in a conversation where no one was freaking talking to him. And I just <laughs> merely wanted to tell him after him bombing on stage that this was not the appropriate time to act like he you know, should run the form. That's all I was saying. I'm sure he was like, I'm sure he was like, damn, dad. Dad." (laughs) What you got going on real quick, man? We got, we got 30 seconds real quick. You talking to me? Uh, Yes. A bunch of stuff happening, a bunch of shows that I'm working on. I, I shot a pilot right before the um, pandemic hit. I got something that uh, is going to encompass Bunch of comedians specifically in Chicago. Damon. 
Just go to DamonWilliamsComedy.com. If you're in Chicago, come to Riddles. If you want, uh, want to stream my show, my series, Laugh Tonight with Damon Williams, UrbanFlixTV.com. I forgot my social media, but I'm giving it out to Tony. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, I'll be home, actually. I'm coming home to Chicago. I'll be there uh, Friday night putting on the history 35th annual. It's going to be at Sh uh, Chi-Town Movies on 23rd and Troop, 7 o'clock Friday night. So the I stress reliever. Hit my IG. The IG, the stress reliever, or the stress reliever, depending on what school you went to. George <laughs> Wilmore, Damon Williams, Tony Schofield, I love y'all. Love you, Love oh, you, bro. Thank you, brother. Hey, I take a word out of my brother's Tony Schofield book. You see something bad in these streets, you better say something, man. Thank y'all. For real. Y'all, I'm glad y'all love me. Later with Leon. We back next week. Kev, Holly, my man's in them. Up next, my girl Tammy Mack. Let's go. <laughs>